Hey everybody, welcome to the Creativity Cave. I'm Dina Rico and I'm super excited to stamp with you as I always am. I've got a beautiful card to share with you and then we're also going to make a matching um, gift box that you could use for a gift card holder or for a small gift. That would be just lovely. You know, like diamond rings, stacks of hundreds, you know, whatever, whatever you feel, um, whatever you feel like giving this year. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, all right. So this beautiful card is quite simple to make. Let me show you how I did it. I'm going to be featuring the Words of Cheer bundle. This is a great stamp set that comes with some gorgeous dies. I have a whole bunch of them out of here right now because I'm using them on my projects to share with you. So this is a great set because it has the word happy in it and you really just can't go wrong there. So I'm going to take and um, start with a piece of thick white cardstock. So we'll give that a good crease with my bone folder. And then I'm going to take a... I've, done, I've cut a piece of Beauty of the Earth designer series paper to three and three quarters by five, and we're going to do a little stamping on this. Now, my favorite image in this stamp set is this gorgeous, um, I don't even know what you would call it, like bouquet, I guess, of poinsettias. I don't know if that's the right word, but <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Um, and we're going to stamp this on the background and then we're going to stamp it on a scrap of white cardstock so that we can color it in with our Stampin' Blends. So for that, I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to use Misty Moonlight to stamp on the background here. So I'll ink this up. And Misty Moonlight coordinates with this designer series paper, so it's going to look fabulous. I'm just going to grab my scrap paper quick. I've got this, this little mini grid paper is so handy. I'll put that in the, um, in my supply list for you. It's, I've been using it a lot lately and I really love it. Okay. So I'm just going to stamp that in the upper right or left and lower right corners. Okay. Like so just to add a little interest to this. And that looks so pretty. Sometimes I think we forget that we can stamp on designer series paper and it's really quite beautiful. Okay, we'll eventually adhere that to our card. But uh, next I'm going to do some stamping on um, a scrap of cardstock so that I can die cut, um, color and die cut this piece. So the first thing I want to do is clean my stamp because it's dirty right now. So we'll clean that with my chamois. Um, our Stampin' Chamois is a really great tool for cleaning your stamps quickly. So you can see, I just keep this moist, you're welcome, in this stamp case. Um, and then when it gets full of ink, I just rinse it out. So it's really easy to use. All right, I'll take, and this time I'm going to stamp this in some Memento ink because I'm going to color this in with my Stampin' Blends. Now you can actually use our, um, ooh, just don't drop the ink pad. Um, you can actually use our regular um, ink pads, you know, and all the colors to use with Stampin' Blends. But if you want black, you need to use Memento ink. Okay, so I'm giving that a good press. Ugh. Oh, fabulous. All right. <laughs> now to color this, um, the coloring is pretty simple. I'm going to use my Stampin' Blends, and I'm going to be using um, primarily Real Red and Granny Apple Green. I'm also going to bring in a dark Cherry Cobbler just to add a little accent to the center of our poinsettias, as well as a um, Misty Moonlight marker, and that is the light. So to do this, I always like starting with my dark marker. So uh, I'm going to use my red, Real Red Dark. And I'm just going to color the very center of these flowers and then um, kind of the center of each petal, like the base of each petal, like this. And then we're going to blend out a little lighter as we go. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll continue that um, on the two other poinsettias. And here you don't have to have super accurate coloring. You can just kind of go for it. Okay, next up I'll take my light, and I always like using the bullet end of my blends. I think it um, is easiest and gives you the most control. Um, I really only use the brush end for when I'm coloring like a larger area because uh, it's, like I say, it, it's a little trickier to control, and then once the nib starts to loosen up as in not be as stiff as it originally was you're welcome um it it doesn't um give you as much control it's, it it can go outside the lines easily is i guess what i'm trying to say but this bullet end really holds up which is quite nice Okay. Oh, that's looking so pretty, isn't it? Now, if you don't like to use blends, you can also color this with watercolors, uh, watercolor pencils, your um, blender pen and ink pads. Um, it's really up to you. You just want to choose the appropriate ink for your coloring method. So if you're doing anything with water, you're going to want to use a stays on. Otherwise, it will the black will bleed. Okay, we're almost done. Now, I think the poinsettias look really nice, but I really wanted them to have a little extra kind of... Uh, something to really kind of make it extra fancy. So that's why I brought in my cherry cobbler blend. And so I'm just going to do that very center with the cherry cobbler. And I think that just makes it look so pretty. Look at that. So it really just makes it stand out. Okay. Next, we're going to do the greenery with my granny apple green. So again, I'll start with the dark. We'll kind of put dark in the center spine of our holly leaves, which are so pretty. And then I'll put a dark kind of little, just a little quick dab in the base of each of these leafy things. Don't you love my terminology for stuff? I don't know. I do actually have a degree in biology, and I actually took a semester of botany, but it was all lost. All lost on me. That was probably my least favorite biology class. <laughs> okay. And then we'll blend out with the light. We'll also go over kind of the pine sprigs with um, our light as well. Because otherwise there's kind of a lot of just black lines on here. And I wanted to fill it in with a little bit more color to make it pretty. I think you'll, I'll show you when I'm done with this uh, blending part. And then I'll show you the difference it really makes. This is also so relaxing to do. I love it. Um, if you like to color at all, I find Stampin' Blends is kind of the ultimate coloring. 
Okay, so that looks really nice. I'm going to come back with the green in a minute. I'm going to do the little balls here in my Misty Moonlight. But I think the thing I love about blends is the color is vibrant and beautiful and you don't get the the lines, the you know, the marker lines from coloring, which is really nice. And it's just pretty. Okay, so that looks really nice, right? But when we add, I'm using the light, Granny Apple Green, when we add that to all the little stems, it just sort of fills everything in a little bit more. And I think the extra green really sets everything else off quite nicely. So hopefully you can see why I chose to do that because I just I really like the look so even even like the stems here and here they look so nice so I'm getting really excited my team is some of my team members are coming here to Iowa to enjoy on stage with me on stage starts tonight with awards night so going to be really fun. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to go ahead and die cut it and then I'll be right back and we'll finish this up. All right, so this is what we have left. It's so pretty, I think. Um, so I'm going to take this and position this on here. Of course, we're going to pop this up. I mean, hello. So I'm giggling. Can you, I don't know if you can hear that. My puppy is in the background. I think she wants to be in the video. <laughs> little stinker. Okay, so I've put some dimensionals under here. Um, I haven't adhered that to my card yet, so let's get all this oriented the way we want. That looks pretty good. So gorgeous. Oh. Okay, so then I will go ahead and put this on my card. Like so, and that looks great. Now I wanna stamp a sentiment on here. So I've got um, the stamp set comes with some beautiful sentiments and I'm going to take the season's greetings and stamp this in some real red ink, just on a little scrap of white cardstock. It's about um, a half of an inch, maybe just a skosh over. And then we'll add this right over the top. Now this is um, such a pretty card, which is just wonderful, but we need something gorgeous to go with it. So let me show you what we're gonna do to coordinate. You just punch this quick, and then we're gonna kinda adhere it right over the top like so. And then uh, um, then we'll trim it down just a bit. Oh, but you know what? I want to adhere it, adhere it popped up. Goodness me, how did I forget that? Because you know I'm all about popping stuff up. Okay, I've just got the little leftover edge piece. I'll put that right over my adhesive so it won't cause any problems. Okay, I just wanna make sure that I do get some of the fun things on here showing through. I'll give this a little snip like that. Okay, so this looks really great. And if I wanted to, I could embellishment, embellish it. I actually think the only thing it really needs is, um, I'm, I'm gonna put some embellishments in the center of my poinsettias, and then I'm just gonna put a little clear wing Costella on here because that just makes everything better when it sparkles. I love sparkly stuff. Okay, you can see that sparkle on there. And then I will take some, I've got some metallic pearls, 
and put these on here. Now, this was actually one of, this was an alternative version of a card I did in my Stampin' Game Night workshop. I'll link the video in at the end of this one to that. And we made a watercolor version of this card that was really pretty. I do still have some of the packets left over, so I'll put the link if you'd like to purchase a packet. It, it's a make and take packet that makes five cards and there's all kinds of goodies in there, including these watercolor, um, or I'm sorry, these uh, metallic dots and this beautiful paper. So let me show you um, that little gift box I was talking about that's going to coordinate so nicely with this. So I'll continue to use the same um, goodies. So I'm going to take one of our paper pumpkin boxes. So I'll put that together here in just a moment. But I have um, taken a piece of white cardstock and I... Um, adhere, I'm adhering a piece of that same designer series paper to it. Now my white cardstock is five and a half by three and three quarters. And then the DSP is uh, three and a half by five and a quarter. I really had to think that one through. Wow. And we're going to um, use some of the other dies that are part of this set. I've got the word happy which you know I love. And I want to pop this up onto my card. So I've also die cut this with the uh, foam adhesive sheets. Now my tip on this is to, um, first of all, I didn't think of this until after I die cut my happy. So I probably could have die cut these together. But um, to make it easy, I'm just going to leave this in the, the background. Kind of the negative space here so that it's a little easier to adhere the cardstock onto this little piece like so and then it's kind of on there pretty nice and then we'll pop this out and then we're also going to adhere to this I gotta line up my dot there we go we're also going to adhere to this um, the smaller letters. Okay, so we'll make sure all the little pieces are poked out of here. And your take your pick tool is really handy for that. What I love about this is the adhesive is on the back of this um, piece as well. And sometimes it kind of pulls out the rest of the little bits. It did on a few of these, but we'll grab the last couple. Okay, so I'm just gonna position this on here like so. Now I'm not pressing it in super hard and I'll show you why that is in just a moment. So then I also, as mentioned, I also die cut the word happy um, in the smaller size. Now, oh, it's right here. <laughs> uh, this I actually die cut from our velvet paper. So it's kind of pretty and soft to the touch, which is nice. So I'm just going to put a little liquid glue on the back of these letters because that's pretty easy to get on there. I think my my glue, ooh, there we go. My glue's starting to get low. Okay. I'm just going to flip that around and center it up on top here. And that goes pretty well like so. Okay. Oh, now this is really nice, but let's be honest, it's a little boring. So what I want to do <laughs> is take and um, add a little bit of fun stuff to this. So using some more of the dies in this bundle, I've die cut some holly leaves and some poinsettias. So I'm going to take and tuck these in underneath. Um, 
and add them to my card. So I'll use some glue dots for that along with my take your pick tool because I'm telling you this is like the handiest tool ever. So I'll just put that on there and then I've got um, the smaller one which we're going to set on top kind of off center or off you know what I mean. And then I'll add this right there to my happy. And then we'll tuck our holly leaves on underneath. And isn't that gorgeous? We'll keep doing that. Okay. So we'll continue adding a couple of these. One of the things I love about this die is it cuts three flowers and three leaves out at once. So you only have to run it through one time and then you'll have all your pieces. Um, or at least you get, you know, several pieces at once, which makes it a little easier to use. So I kind of love that feature. All right. So we'll pop this off. And put this kind of over here on the Y. I didn't pick that up very well. <laughs> Add this on top. Actually, it was a little easier to do that way. <laughs> and I'm going to actually kind of flip this over and tuck that in like so. Oh, yeah, that looks fantastic. Now we're going to decorate with a couple of our little metallic pearls because that looks just so pretty on here and then the last thing that I was going to do um, is I meant before I did this to stamp on here like I did on my card and it's not too late so let me show you how you could do that so take your best stamping friend post-it notes <laughs> and I'm just going to put my post-it note right up to the edge of this card stock on here and then I'm going to stamp that background on here once again and I think it's going to be really great. So my stamp is dirty once again so we'll clean that quick and then use our Misty Moonlight ink like we did before. Okay so we've got that clean. So I'll just get a little bit On here and you gotta ooh I'm gonna have to push pretty hard because we have that foam adhesive under here but oh we got it to work yay and then when you masked off that area you can't tell that I forgot to do it in the first place <laughs> so we'll do that once again on this side reusing those post-its and then we'll stamp it again Kinda like that. And now it's gorgeous. Okay, so doesn't that look beautiful? All right, now let's put together our little box. Oh, we're gonna do one other thing though. We're going to stamp holidays on here because right now we just have happy, which is fine. But in our stamp set, we have a few words. So we have happy holidays, happy Christmas. Um, I know happy Christmas isn't as much a saying here in the U.S., but they do say it in the U.K. and uh, South Pacific quite commonly. But if we just take a little scrap of white, so I've got a really skinny strip here. I'm going to stamp this in granny apple green to kind of bring in some green into this. I would say this is the color of the Grinch, but it also looks nice <laughs> with other colors. When I think of the Grinch, this is the green. He, he definitely is. <laughs> so that makes me giggle. Okay, now I can take either a little scrap from my foam adhesive sheet and put this under the word. Um, or like an edge piece of your dimensionals would work nicely for this as well. Now, all of the supplies that I'm using today can be found in my online store. They are going to be linked in the description of this video. And so you can purchase them if you would like to make this. It, oh, it makes such a gorgeous gift. So beautiful. Okay, so let's 
put the box together. The box rocks because it's so easy. So our paper pumpkin boxes come in a 10 pack. They're mini paper pumpkin boxes. So they're kind of like the boxes paper pumpkin kits come in, but kind of shrunk down in size. So there's kind of a coating on there. So if you wanted to put some food items, you could, um, and the coating will protect them, you know, so like the, the oils won't seep through. Um, or you can have the shiny side out. It's up to you. I like the shiny side on the inside. So this is so easy. You're just going to put the two tabs on the inside and then fold this round around and then it locks into place. There's little, these little tabs lock in at the bottom. So that's all there is to assemble this. No glue is required, which is fabulous and it's good to go. Now to close this, all you have to do is tuck in the sides and then the little tabs uh, tuck in as well. So that closes up the box. So you can fill it with like that shreddy stuff or tissue paper or whatever. And then we're going to adhere this on the top. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of ribbon to this. So I did adhere this to a piece of white just to make it sturdier. And I did use thick white cardstock. So I'm going to take a little of my red ribbon. We have got several different red ribbons. This is the red ruffled ribbon. And I'm just going to tie, um, we'll do a bow. If, if you are bow impaired, a knot will be just fine and no one will think less of you for it. So don't worry if bows are not easy for you. Okay, so I'm just going to tie this. Oops, loops next. Come on, Dina. You learned this in kindergarten. You can do it. <laughs> I actually vividly remember learning how to tie my shoelaces and thought it was really, really hard. I, isn't, I think it's funny that I can remember that from when I was a little, little kid. Okay, so I'll snip the ends of these. And I'm also going to put a little glue, because this is kind of loosey-goosey. So I'm going to just throw a glue dot on underneath that bow to hold it into place. I think glue dots are really good for doing your bidding. They will, they will make whatever you need to happen, happen. <laughs> okay, now to finish this off, I'm just going to go ahead and adhere it to, to my um, box. I'm actually going to use liquid glue for this because I think it'll hold it on to my box really nicely. Uh, Stamp and seal or seal plus will work fine too but you know my liquid glue is handy. And there we go. Look at that gorgeous box and the fabulous card coordinates. I hope you loved these projects. Again, if you need to purchase any of them, I would so appreciate your per your business. You can shop my online store. The links are in the description of this video. And if you could give me a thumbs up for this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel here in the corner so that you don't miss any of my awesome videos. Thank you guys so much for stamping with me. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.